All right. And so we're in Ecclesiastes 2 right now. And this is kind of like where things sort of like you start to find a purpose. Okay. We can see that apart from God, none of this matters. This earthly plane. Uh, God is the purpose of life. Knowing him gives our life meaning. Serving him gives our life purpose. And these very facts I'm stating to you are the things that you will find out in your everyday life if you will just give him more time. Like, it will come in, in the moment. You cannot plan for or prepare for, but just try and buckle down and understand everything that had to happen to you so you could learn that God is here for you. Because things will happen and they may not all be fun moments. They may not all be water into wine type of miracles, man. You may really get sick or you may really be out here having, you may have, you might really have a car accident or you might be in a very everyday normal situation and then a piercing thought would just come and say, you know what? I need Jesus Christ in my life today, right now, today. And it may not even be, you know, it's a life changing moment, but it doesn't have to be, you know, apocalyptic because when the Lord comes in, he starts to change you and he starts to do the work. That's when it'll happen. The uprooting, the breakdown, it's plenty of time for things to, to seem weird and seem kooky and crazy or why things keep falling off the wall or whatever. You think somebody's trying to get your attention. It's God. Okay. Moving on from that, moving on from that. Um, when I was at a low point, after my turnaround, after God fixed me, changed my life, gave me a new name, gave me a new purpose. After he did all the things for me, my memory stuck. They, they stuck to me. They got me. But he said to me, he said, because I was getting a lot of the key parts. Like I was getting a lot of my memories kind of like jumbled because I will remember certain parts, the worst parts of it. I would not remember the parts where God was victorious. I will remember the parts where the devil was yanking my chain. I was feeling down. I was feeling doubt. I was feeling depression. And the miracles, you know, reading John, reading reading the four Gospels, those saved me. Like, legit saved me. The miracles... Um, for through and through, it's not like I forgot that he did miracles, but I sort of like didn't think of the miracles that he performed for me when I was really, really like having flashes of visions and just nightmares and just not being able to sleep, not being able to relax or even close my eyes without seeing the the devil and things of that nature. So all of those things that I witnessed by myself in a room where my family weren't talking to me and things of that nature like it was very hard for me it was very hard but God had a plan and I had to stick I had to stick to my position and a lot of y'all don't know y'all position yet it it will be revealed in due time but until he revealed to me Vajay this is who you are I was going to continue to try to find other people to help me with sort my stuff out. Life is not about asking other people for help. It's just not. He was teaching me how to fend for myself. And I did, I didn't know what that was about. I didn't know why it was happening to me or why he wasn't telling me exactly what to say. But the first couple of times that it happened, I just like cried, was scared really really docile about it but eventually i was like i ain't scared of you and there's nothing you can do to make me scared so it's just like you have to reach that naturally it doesn't happen overnight okay anyway i remember the worst parts of my situation i had family issues and that's all i could really keep my mind on if i wasn't thinking about that because everybody was just in my business like in you know the reality is I was in a very serious situation and people in my family should have known about it because it's not something that you just hide you know sleep under the rug I was happy that people knew but I was also feeling very judged by people let's just say that okay I felt resentment toward my family that were there even the ones that weren't there like why are you mad at them they had nothing to do with that like the lord 
was really in my corner the most. But I still kind of had those idols trying to creep around me and like make me do stuff. And, you know, and <sighs> that's what's messing me up. The crystals, the bracelets. And I used to make jewelry. So that's how I got it to kind of like, well, you just bored or you just going through it because you're just thinking too much. You're just thinking too much. And maybe I was thinking too much, but for a good reason. Right. So I made crystal jewelry. So. When I got the opportunity, I'm like, man, I'm going to go make me some jewelry, make me some money, do something that's fun. Because I love weaving. I love, you know, copper wire. I love doing, making little arts and crafts and stuff. So that's how the devil got me initially with the crystal crap. Like, that's how, that's number one, how I got into crystals anyway, trying to sell them. Right. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. But the thing is, the facts were something bad in my life was happening and I, I was taking my time and in time I was remembering those things that the Lord said to me when I was in better moods when I had a um when I had a more optimistic mindset about my life and I was through the worst of it you know I got me a job you know things were starting to work out for me and sometimes you have to just realize that like you're reliving your worst the worst thing that will ever happen to you it was giving me insomnia i was in the hospital in the er mental health just spiking up you know like i was having a panic attack daily like crazy like i was not myself because i was out of my element and people was testing me you know like physical people you know what I'm saying so I was being attacked that's just what it come down to and the suffering that I went to was for the glory of God because I prayed every night every night at first I didn't have the strength to pray at first I was just like God please help me I didn't even ask for God to help me at first because I knew that the idolatry in the crystals, eventually I came to find out, you know what? This crystal stuff is what's making me feel like this. This is what's making me feel like I'm I'm not on God's side again. This stuff is making me feel bad, you know? Throw the crystal. I'm just throwing clothes away. I'm thinking of my ex, throwing his things he got me away. I'm just trying to, everything that even resembles what I went through, I'm throwing it out, you know. So anyway, anyway, things can seem very, very hard while you're on your journey. But don't ever deviate from the plan that God has for you. You can always say, God, how many more days? How long do I have to last? Please help me. Make me, you know, you've given me eternal life. Please give me grace. Please give me mercy. Like, if you just state the facts read the facts in the book the holy bible you will come to find out you are not in any way shape or form the first person to have done god wrong and live to tell about it so every time you mess up you're not gonna get struck down but eventually if god has to give you a big revelation it may not be a gentle one and revelation is not gentle Period. Like, I even saved myself, and this is something that God revealed to me. I saved myself a lot of suffering by reading the Bible and just by listening to it, soaking it in. Like, the soaking, I think it helps when you're fasting, soaking in. Like, soaking is like when you play Bible verses and you're asleep, or you're about to go to sleep, and you're playing ones that'll help you stay asleep or have a good sleep or just think of the Lord. But I'm not talking about soaking. What helped me the most was letting it play on a on a TV or on a loudspeaker and just blasting it like so you can hear all through your house the words of the Lord. Oh, such a sweet feeling. Like it's such a good feeling that it gives me chills. Like to this day, I'm feeling bad. It's going to be gospel music. It's going to be Psalms 91, Psalms 89, Psalms 18, Psalms 23. Okay, like those are those are the best songs. Well, all the songs are wonderful. 
Okay, the whole Bible is wonderful. But um, God is restoring moments back to your life. The Lord loves to give us time back. He loves to make up for time's loss. He loves, he loves to restore things back to glory. He loves to give us back things that we treasure. Okay, and I'm not talking about things we desire or things we obsess over, but things that we treasure not idolaters not not idolized but things that we treasure things that really will help us like true indeed if i would have stayed doing jewelry i just would have did everything but crystals and copper wires and stuff like i would have used just straight up bees you know but come to find out like um there's ways that you can like ignore what you do and just turn a a blind eye to it as a human but eventually when you get on your godliness you know you decide to turn your life around you say hey you know what anything that god doesn't want me to do i want nothing to do with it i want nothing to do with it i just i just want to serve the lord and live the days of my life in the house of the lord forever okay like i i don't want um I don't want something that is that means so little to me. Like, what is that anyway? It means so little to me. Of course, I can let that go. Now, if you happen to remember your trauma or go through an inopportune moment and you're just trying to live your best life and you get a, a flashback and stuff, it's just like, I'm glad that wasn't yesterday. I'm, I'm glad that I made it through. I'm glad that that's just a depiction of something that happened. I'm glad that I'm not still that same person. It will take the spiritual maturity being on this new path with the Lord. And you're never going to deviate from this path either. This is a this is a ordained by God because you are his child and he's he's coming back. He's coming back and, and he's not going to stand for it. You know, like he loves you really. And his love is absolute. It's infinite. It can't be decrease for some people but some people feel it all over their body but but this person only feels it when they pray no it's not gonna be like that when he comes back it's gonna be complete and he knocking on my door and i'm opening the door for him everyone's gonna bow their knee in the name of jesus okay so when he comes back you can have that conversation with him of why you know somebody you can have that conversation today why is there so much confusion? Why do so many people believe in different gods? Why do you let people believe in different gods? And that's something that I be getting confused about. So sometimes I do sit and think about when I didn't know better. And that's not something that you want to do. Because you can't think about how you, you know, the shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's like you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Um, it purifies everything. You see. You, everything you see as well as what you don't see. But media and family members have polluted me in that in that time frame to think of paganism and all these other things that seem right to them. Egyptian gods, you know, things that in the Bible they even tell you directly, this is fake. This is crap. Don't ever do this. And I was literally doing it. And it wasn't until I started reading the Bible as an adult and I wasn't reading the same. Because when you a child, you don't know the, the right verses to read. You don't know. I was all up. Oh, I was all up in John because God told me he was the one he told to get up. God told me he was the one he said, get up. Yeah, he told me. And. A lot of those stories I resonated with because, yeah, I'm finally seeing the light. I'm finally seeing life how it's supposed to be seen. I'm finally experiencing it. Oh, I was so happy. But then I would have days where I didn't read enough. I didn't think about the Lord enough. I didn't do something right. And I was like, man, this is bad. You know, like, just cut that out. Just cut that out. Sometimes you need a break, okay? I didn't know about eternal salvation. Um, I just knew about everything in the Bible that they teach you as a child. Um, but the nitty gritty, the Ezekiel's, the Elijah's, I didn't know about them. I didn't know about the prophets. Um, the Lord God can see the enmity in people and not cast them down. He can see what you're willing to do, but still say they're good.
you know now that i know that you know i just know what i do. now that i know how great the lord is i know that he is greater than i can even conceive in my mind so why even give myself so much you know trouble you know what i'm saying